Hi booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be about the books that I managed to read in the month of February. Apologies if I sound a little bit nasally or uh, not 100%. I'm battling a cold at the moment um, and yeah so it's it's all in my nose and yeah just not feeling 100% great at the moment. Um, but as you can see, uh, if you watched my March uh, TBR, then you'll know that I haven't quite decided how I'm going to go about filming in the flat. I am in. Um, I think it sounds a little bit echoey. It's probably because I don't have any doors up at the moment. Um, yes, so I'm kind of very open plan living. Uh and I'm still kind of getting used to, to where things are and it's only been a couple of weeks. Um, so I'm not quite set on the, the uh, where I'm going to be filming. Um, I kind of would like to film in front of my bookshelves, but it's not convenient with where uh, plug sockets are for the ring light. And so, yeah, so I'm still not 100% set on where I'm actually going to be filming. Um, Today I'm in my living room. I have my little book nook here. Um, these are book, a set of books I was given when I was a child um, and they're ones that I wanted to have their own little special display. So I thought it might, it might be quite nice to try filming in front of those today. Um, but yeah, so February was a great reading month. However, as far as keeping record of all the stats is concerned, not so great. So there aren't any stats this month. Um, I just I haven't had time to go through story graph and make sure that everything's input where it should be to get the information out that I need. Um, but I do have a list of the books that I finished, so I will go through all of those because this is turning into a pretty long intro. So, where did I start? Um, yeah, it was I very much mood read in February. And I wasn't in the mood for anything that was going to be heavy or uh, take a lot of focus. Um, I was still trying to finish things off uh, so that I would be able to move um, at the end of the month. And it just meant that I just went with uh, um, romance for the entire month. Every single book was romance in some way or another. Uh, so let's go through them. The first one that I finished is One Sexy Ride by Vivian Arend. This is in her Thompson and Sons series and um, I, it's a series I've been reading on and off. I think it's the third book in the series and I've been reading them on and off over the last few years. I kind of don't really keep up with what Vivian Arend releases anymore uh, like I used to. Yet well, at one point, you know, eight, nine years ago, she was quite a favourite author of mine. Um, so I did buy up a lot of the books that she was releasing and just never really got around to them as I was exploring other avenues. Um, so I decided that I would pick up One Sexy Ride and this is about Len and Janie. Um, Len is uh, working in his family's motor garage. Janie uh, is a property developer and Janie is looking to leave the town that they both call home um to move to be near her family because she feels that there's really nothing keeping her in in the town and then Len who she's had a real long-term crush on since he was a teenager and who has also uh, returned that crush um but neither of them have ever acted on it he decides that you know if she's going to leave town he has to, he has to have a shot with her he has to have his try and they decide that they're going to get together and it turns out that Len has been waiting for Janie for a long, long time and he's really only been waiting for Janie. And it's so lovely and sweet when it happens, when Janie realises what's going on and, and then also that actually Len's done his research. He might not have done his physical research but he's done his mental research and he knows how to keep her happy. So that was really, really fun. And it was just a real light, sweet way to start off the month. I knew there was going to be a happy ending. I knew that something was going to happen that would mean that either Janie would stay in town or Len would leave with her. Um, 
but it was just a great way to start the month and I really thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to picking up because I do have the whole series and I'm looking up looking forward to finishing it all at some point um hopefully it will fall within um some of the prompts that I'm I'm following for tackle my TBR this year my second finish of the month is one of my most anticipated books of this year and that is Meet Me at the Wedding by Georgia Toffolo. This is the fourth and final book in her Meet Me series uh, that she first released, I think the first book came out very late uh, 2020 and I've been really really anticipating it. This is Henry and Lily's story uh, Lily is the fourth of the four girls that were badly affected by a car accident in their teen. Henry was also involved in the car accident, but in the car that hit them and caused all the damage that has affected all their lives. Lily is the fixer of the four friends and she is trying to organise uh, the wedding of Victoria, who was the um, girl that we met in the very first book. A well, series of things are going wrong. First of all, Henry's father has passed away and the wedding was supposed to be hosted in Henry's um, ancestral home, which is a stately home near the village where they live. And he's come back and he doesn't want anything to do with the stately home. He had a bad falling out with his father after the accident and he moved away and had nothing to do with it and had forgotten the beauty of the home where he grew up. And Lily um is angry quite rightly angry with Henry because he's made this decision which means that the wedding potentially is off only in the two of them talking Henry starts to see the beauty of his home again he starts to fall in love with it again and he starts to see his childhood through different eyes uh, through a different lens and also going the other way he helps Lily to realise that actually not everything is on her to fix. She can let things fail if they need to. And I just absolutely adored it. Like I say, it's one of my most anticipated reads of this year. This was actually an early copy that I received through NetGalley. The book doesn't actually release until the end of April. Um, so at the moment I can only show you um, an e cover um, rather than the the actual book but I do have the physical book on pre-order from Waterstones so that I will have it to complete the set on my shelves and I'm really looking forward to being able to uh, reread the whole set of four from start to finish uh, one after the other to, to pick up on all the little bits and pieces that we learn about all the girls um, and all the guys that they fall in love with as we go along so I thoroughly recommend it. They're so easy to read. Uh, she has co-written them or ghost-written them with other authors and it was a different author per book. You can see that in the writing, um, but for me it didn't actually make it any worse or any better of a read for that. I just thoroughly enjoyed each one and to be honest I would actually go hunting for the authors, co-authors, to find their own works. Um, or anything else they've written because I'd love to see what else they've put their names to. The third book that I finished was because of all the things I had on my TBR. I either couldn't start it because it was going to be for a specific readathon or it was too much, too busy, too full of information. It wasn't something that I would want to um, be continuing and it would then overrun into the specific readathon. So I downloaded a new book. I didn't pay for it. It was a freebie. Um, so technically I haven't bought a book. Uh, but yes, I did download a book when I shouldn't have really. I should have found something else. Um, but that book was Once Upon a Time Flicker. This is the first book in a series of novels about a princess and her bodyguard. And the princess has been married off to the Prince of Monaco, um, who wants her because she comes from a royal lineage that is, uh, I can't think of the actual term that they used, um, but basically she need, he needs her royal status. He's not a good man and 
uh, she is actually in love with a bodyguard who protects her brother and has been since she was a teenager and they had a brief affair when she was in her early 20s but something happened and he finished the affair and then he went off and got married straight away um, to someone else because he'd gotten the someone else pregnant but the two situations didn't overlap this wasn't the best book that I've read in the princess bodyguard trope um, <sighs> It felt too drawn out there was there was too much really going on there was too much pause in between things happening um it left things a little bit open-ended so there is a follow-on book which takes over the story uh from where it ended and i don't think i'll be continuing um it's it was okay it wasn't great i read better i've read worse uh, I, I just wouldn't recommend it I don't think so it's not one that I would pick up ever again uh, so I'm glad that it's on my Kindle and not on my shelves um, because it would probably promptly be given away again and then after that it was shift of thorn week um, and if you saw my February TBR then you know that I had five books that I wanted to read there were five prompts I will uh, link that video either in the cards above or in um, the comments box down below so that you can go and check that out uh, but there were five prompts basically the aim was to read books uh, that feature shifters and the paranormal and all of that kind of malarkey so I went with five romance novels that I had um, and they're all listed I didn't get through all five I only managed to finish three of them uh, but I was really happy with the three that I did finish because it did mean that I knocked books again knocked books off of my existing tbr um so i was really happy with that outcome um one book was a brand new release though and that book released the day before shiftathon started and again it was one of my most anticipated releases for this year and that is fury of isolation by corinne callahan now i think i said in the tbr video that this was set around the seattle pack of uh dragon shifters it's not it's actually set around the scottish pack only uh the dragon shifter in this book his fated mate is the sister um of one of his pack mates fated mates and she actually lives in america they've unknown to everybody in the their lives they've been talking on the phone every day um getting to know each other falling in love with each other through the phone and they haven't actually met he has an idea that uh she is his fated mate um particularly because of how strongly he reacts and the way that he can't actually stay away from her and she phones him when some guys turn up at the garage where she's working and she's in danger she knows she's in danger she has an inkling um and she phones him just so not someone knows that something's happened to her so that someone comes looking for her he flies all the way to america uh, from scotland to save her because he loves her and he doesn't want her to be in danger and it was just so fantastic um corinne callahan the author of this series she's really starting to branch out now uh, she's it, she's introducing new species to the world she's introducing new packs to the world we've been told that there is a new dragon pack um they haven't gone to seattle they've gone to the opposite coast of america on this one and there is a dragon shifter pack nearby but the guys that have actually taken um his fated one and i'm really sorry i have completely forgotten their names i like i say i haven't written it down I'm just filming this on the fly because I need to get it filmed uh, and uploaded um, so I've forgotten to do some of the basic research um, so I'm really sorry but uh, they aren't doing anything to help they aren't the ones that um, have kidnapped her it's a completely new species entirely and I'm really intrigued by this new species I want to know more about them they have magic apparently they are tied into the magic that holds the universe the world the earth together 
um, and they are responsible for maintaining it and making sure that it's at the right levels. Part of that is dragon shifters being with their fated mates. Um, and naturally they don't want to do anything to harm the mating of this couple, but they do need help from the dragon shifters to reclaim an artifact which is integral to their magic, and which is why they have done the kidnapping that they've done. Um, so, and it goes from there. Um, she is left captive. She's not allowed to go off with her mate, but they've seen each other. They've, they know that they're in love with each other. Um, and it is all about the two of them staying safe until they can be back together again. Um, so again, yes, it does have a happy ending, but it is the continuation of an ongoing story and we've introduced a new storyline. So I'm guessing that at some point Corinne is going to be writing from different species perspective and maybe there's going to be another series on the cards somewhere along the line. So I'm really, really looking forward to that as well. Corinne has more books out this year. I can't remember whether it's two or three. I know there's definitely one out towards the end of the year. I think there may be one in the summer. Um, and yes, I definitely have those on pre-order and I will definitely be reading more from her this year. The second book that I finished for Shiftathon was A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. Hi, editing Lynette here. Um, just going back through the video, I realise I've put in a pretty big spoiler for the Akatar series. What I've done um, is I have put up in the bottom corner of the screen, it flashes up series spoiler and it stays there until I've finished talking through that section. Um, but for people who've read the Akatar series, obviously it won't cause an issue. But if you haven't read it, you probably want to skip that part of the video and move on to the rest of it. This was the continuation or wrapping up really of Feyre and Risan's story and also giving us a little bit of an intro to Cassian and Nesta's story which is the next book in the series and I really enjoyed it actually. This was the epilogue that we should get. Um, happy Ever Afters happen, you know, People walk away from situations and everything's fine and dandy, but sometimes there is trauma that needs to be worked through. And that's what I loved about this book. There was a lot of trauma in the whole of the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, especially for Feyre. Um, a lot happened uh, to her and because of her. And she has a lot of mental stress and trauma that she needs to work through and this book shows her starting acknowledging that she has this um and also that the others around her have these issues as well and it, it's all of them basically starting on the path to healing and them finding all the different ways that they need to heal and learning to heal um, and I really appreciated that. It's also, we also got to see Resand and Feyre together, which is just always, always delightful. I really, really loved uh, them as a couple. I was so glad that actually uh, Resand turned out to be the, uh, the beast in The Beauty and the Beast. The second book is supposed to be Hades and Persephone. Um, for me, I felt Resand embodied the Beast part of the Beauty and the Beast retelling far better than Tamlin ever did. Um, I think it was just the description of Tamlin for me that made him the Beast. Uh, so, yes, but also, again, talking about Tamlin, he does feature in this book. Um, and, again, showing just how traumatic things that happen affect different people in different ways. So... I really did appreciate that. Um, I know Sarah J Mass is becoming a bit of a controversial author for some of the views that she has. I can understand that. Um, so I'm not going to big her up too much. Uh, I just, I can appreciate her writing in these books. Um, and yes, they, they are ones I would continue because I, I, I do. Nesta has a long way to go. Um, and... 
yeah, I'd like to read the next book in the series. I'd like to read Nesta and Cassian's story. Not only because I want them to be together, but because I want to continue with Nesta's journey uh, to recovery as well. The third and final book that I finished for the Shiftathon readathon was Ares by Felicity Heaton. This is the first book in her Guardians of Hades series. And it's based around the sons and children, I think there may be a daughter as well, of Hades and Persephone, and then finding their true loves. Uh, the sons of Hades, um, one of which is Ares, uh, who is named after the Greek god, um, they have been charged with protecting the gates to the underworld. Um, from demons who have been banished by Hades and surrounding this um, they come into contact with different people. Um, Ares comes across a woman who is in some trouble. Now she's not a demon but she has demon in her bloodline somewhere along the line um, and as a result, she uh, has some powers of her own. Uh, Ares takes her, not, I suppose in some way it would be classed as hostage, so it would be classed as uh, Stockholm Syndrome, um, but they are intrigued by each other before that. Ares says that he's keeping her with him to keep her safe because she is in danger. There is a demon who's trying to steal her power uh, because it will help him in his attempt to go through the gates to the underworld. Um, and it's all about that. The I had an issue with this. It's not the best book by Felicity Heaton that I've ever read. Um, again, like Vivian Arendt, she was one of my OG Felic uh, romance authors that I really adored eight, nine years ago and uh, continually read whatever they were putting out. Um, only this one for me, I think there was a little bit too much. She was in danger, he saved her, he told her to stay safe. Uh, she put herself back in danger, he told her to stay safe. She put herself back in danger, then he was in danger and she wanted to help. And it just, there was just, it just happened too many times and it took too long to get to the end of the story where they realised that actually they're supposed to be together and she's going to live with him and yes. There is this continuing story, um, there are six brothers I think and maybe one sister. Um, I do have the next two books in the series, so at some point I will give them a go and see whether the series gets better. Um, but at the moment I'm not invested enough to continue it straight away, which is a shame because with Felicity Heaton I would binge read her stories. Um, but it has got to the point now where maybe I don't actually binge read them as much as I used to. The next book that I finished was a short story and again this was a new purchase but it was a surprise release from one of my all-time favourite romance authors Samantha Towell and that is a book called Axed. This was originally uh, included in a short story collection which was only up for sale for a short time. I didn't buy the short story collection because this was the only book in there that I probably would have read and I, I have a few short story collections on my Kindle just like that and I don't need any more. So when she said she'd released it uh, to the general population as um, a novella in its own right, I had to pick it up. And this book was Axed. This is about a young man, Axel, who was imprisoned for a crime, a murder he did not commit. However, all the evidence pointed his way. Um, he is out on uh, probation and the friends that he was with um, <clears throat> when he was at school, when the murder happened, all suddenly start dying just as he's come back to town. And it's looking like he is the culprit for these deaths. And the female probation officer um, is a woman girl he, who was part of that group and he'd 
long, long time had a crush on her, but he was the geeky, nerdy one that nobody ever really took a notice of, but obviously being in prison, he's bogged out, he's grown into his looks, and she remembers him fondly, and she doesn't believe that he committed the original murder in the first place. But it turns out that yes he was framed for that murder and he's being framed for these as well it was very quick it was only about 50 pages obviously it's a romance and it's a happy ever after um and i was glad they got together it wrapped up very quickly it filled about an hour um i think at the point that i read this um i'd actually come over to the flat i was really upping the packing process um i had about 10 days before I was due to move, I don't think I even had 10 days. <laughs> um, and I'd I'd come over because I'm in another town from where I was living. I'd come over because I had to come to the shops here to get some packing boxes so that I could continue packing. And yes, and the weather was awful. Uh, and my reading chair had been delivered, which is the chair I was sat in when I filmed my March TBR. Um, so I sat there for an hour with a coffee and read it. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I always love whatever Samantha Tower writes. It doesn't matter. Um, I just love everything she puts out there. And she is a, a go-to author for me. And she is an auto-buy author. She is an author that even though I'm not allowed to buy books, I will find the pennies to buy them. Because I know she's never going to let me down. And I can't recommend her highly enough. Especially if you're looking to get started in romance. And get started in romance with a little bit of heat and a little bit of steam. She definitely delivers on that. Let's just say from one of her books, I will never look at gin bottles the same way ever again. And the final book that I finished in February was the second of my most anticipated releases for the month. And that book was How Good It Was by Scarlett Cole. I have been loving this author. I have been loving this series. Um... And I'm looking forward to having spare money again at some point in the future to be able to afford to invest in more of her series because I'm just adoring everything about these at the moment. This is a book around uh, a band called The Sad Fridays. The series is called Excess All Areas. This book is about Luke, who is the drummer. Now, in the previous two bo books, Luke is spiralling out of control. He is taking the road into drug, alcohol, sex, addictions, all three. Um, and this book is the one that pulls him out of it, that shows him there's a different path to go down. And I mean, in some ways, the, the turnaround from the path that he was on is far too quick. Um, wasn't, was far too easy in some ways. However, what she does tackle with Luke is that actually the underlying causes of those addictions are mental health um, and that Luke is struggling and Luke has been struggling for a long time. Luke has a lot of things in his past that he needs to reconcile and he needs professional help. Willow is the blogger um, who got the Sad Fridays noticed and basically got their music out there got them spotted by a record company and got them the deal that uh, they're now living um only she and luke had a one night stand while luke and the rest of the sad fridays were in detroit um recording their album um uh, and yeah willow turns up because on luke's doorstep because she's pregnant and Luke is very definitely the father. Um, I made that sound like it's something out of a Star Wars film. Uh, but I like Star Wars. Um, so, yeah. So is this that triggers Luke to examine his life and the way things are going? And what I really like about these books um, is that Scarlet is encouraging the men in her books to talk to each other. Uh Luke has some issues that come to before when he's talking to his bandmates um, and his best friends and it's all related to Willow turning up in his life and how he feels about it and how he feels about 
the situation because Willow's asked him to um, stay with her for a year. She, she, like I say, she's a blogger and she's a lifestyle blogger and she has a wholesome um, persona which needs to be protected if she's to keep her business as it is. And he has some issues with that. Um, and it triggers some other mental health issues for him as well. And the guys talk with him and encourage him to talk and encourage him to talk professionally as well as personally, to talk to Willow, um, to talk to Izzy, his sister, uh, to talk to Matt, his best friend, um, to talk to Jace, uh, who he has issues with. And if you've read the previous two books, you'll know all about that. If you've seen me wrap up the previous two books, you'll know all about that. Um, but yes, I absolutely adored this. Uh, I think Alex's story is next and that's coming out a bit later on this year. Um, and I will definitely be getting my hands on a copy of that one as well because I'm just adoring it, absolutely loving it. Scarlet Cole is fast becoming a brand new auto buy, favourite romance author. Um, I love a good rock star romance as well. And these are these books are definitely ticking all the boxes for me, and I can't recommend them highly enough. Because um, again, they're great if you're new to romance. I think you could easily pick them up and run away with them. There is some steam in them. There is some heat in them, um, which are also written very well, um, which I quite enjoy. So yeah, it was a great finish to my reading month. So those were all the books that I managed to finish in the month of February. Have you read any of those books? Are you intrigued by any of those books? Let me know in the comments box down below. I'm sorry it was a bit wishy-washy with names etc and characters. Um, just not mentally in the right place this month for filming um, and making sure I've got everything I need. Uh, but yeah, have a chat with me down below. Um, I love chatting in the comments box with you all. If you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, then please do go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You'll find that I put up videos every Monday at 6.30pm UK time. And as always, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.